There's a lot of value in getting a formal education from business school. I myself in my 20s quickly realized that if I wanted to advance in my career, I would need to further my education. So on top of my bachelor degree, I enrolled in a master of accounting and combined with my Japanese skills, this enabled me to get a job with Deloitte in Tokyo. While this education and the lessons that I learned in this education were helpful, there were so many other skills that I needed to learn. And in fact, what I know now is that there are so many leadership lessons that business school fails to teach you. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what they are. So when I started working as an international tax consultant at Deloitte, I had never before been involved in high level meetings. And on my very first day of my new job, I was taken to a meeting with a really important client, uh, a major bank in Japan, and I was totally out of my depth. I was new. There was so much that I didn't know and so much that I needed to learn. But what I did successfully is that I read the room and I read the dynamics that were at play in that room. And I knew that as an entry level employee in a Japanese meeting, it wasn't my place to talk. I know this sounds contrary to everything I've been teaching you on this channel and contrary to everything that is expected in most Western business environments. The fact that you need to speak up in meetings, the fact that you should share your opinions, you should share your ideas and your perspectives as well. But sometimes there's different dynamics in the room that you need to play to. And it's these dynamics that you need to understand and interpret if you want to have successful interactions with other people at work. The dynamics that you encounter will change. They will change with the team culture. They'll change with the company culture and they'll change with the country culture as well. And as a leader, you need to be flexible enough to adapt to all of these changes. In my case, country culture dictated a large part of how I interacted with other people out side of my team and not surprising it was very Japanese but within my team which was made up mostly of expats other people from western countries like myself I had to adopt a more western style of interaction and communication with those people so the first leadership lesson that business school fails to teach you is to learn the team the company and the country culture that you operate in so I encourage you to think about the dynamics that you encounter in your job think about the dynamics of the team that you work in, of the company that you work for, and of the country that you work in as well. Think of how they're different and similar. Take note of interactions that were perhaps successful with people inside of your team, but not successful with people outside of your company, maybe with clients. Through this analysis, you will better be able to understand the situation around you, and you'll better be able to adapt to the different situations that you face. Remember when I said that the dynamic of the team I was involved in was dictated by Western culture? Well, sometimes the shift to Western culture was difficult for me to do. And this would often show up during internal meetings with other expats. I remember one particular meeting, there were probably five or so people in the meeting, so not a very big meeting. We were about halfway through the meeting and I had said nothing. I'd nodded my head, I'd listened to what other people were saying, and I'd agreed with them in many cases. And my boss noticed that I had not contributed anything by this point. So he asked me, well, what was my opinion on XYZ, the topic that we were talking about. And I was shocked. I was stunned. I was lost for words. I didn't really know what to say. So I think I just thought of some kind of response like, oh, I agree with such and such a person. I think we should go in the direction of XYZ. Now, I don't know how this looked to everyone else in the room, but for me, I felt totally unprepared. I felt ashamed that I didn't have anything to contribute. I felt embarrassed that I didn't have my own thoughts thoughts to share, all I could do was agree with everyone else. So after that, I made a conscious effort to always have something to say during a meeting. I would prepare beforehand to make sure that I had something to contribute and so that I would never be lost for words again. And this leads us to the second leadership lesson that business school fails to teach you, which is to always have something to say during meetings. And the way you do this is to prepare in advance. So before every meeting you go to, find out what will be discussed, find out what are the topics that everyone's going to be talking about and spend 10 maybe 15 minutes 
planning out on your own how you are going to contribute, what you are going to say in response to those topics. What are your thoughts? on those topics, what are your new ideas that you want to contribute? And then more importantly, during the meeting, actually find some space to talk. This could either be you injecting yourself in the conversation and sharing your thoughts with other people, or it could be you responding when your boss is actually asked for your opinion or your ideas on a specific topic. One of the things I loved the most, no matter what job I had, was interacting with other people, interacting with my colleagues, with my boss, with clients, or just other people in the office. I find that this is one of the things that makes work the most fun and much less mundane. Now in Japan, there is a strong culture of building relationships with other people you work with. You work together all day every day, you need to be able to trust each other, to trust each other on a task level and to also trust each other on a relationship level. And in Japan, it's this relationship level trust that is more built by spending time with your coworkers. So this could be going to lunch with them, spending time at corporate functions, with them or joining in for after work drinks, which is what the nomikai culture is all about. And when you look at successful leaders, they are excellent at building relationships with people and also building trust. They were probably promoted into leadership because they'd built high level of trust with other people they work with on a task level and also a relationship level. It's likely they built good relationships with their peers because they probably knew that they would have to rely on those peers from time to time and vice versa. It's likely they built trust with their boss, so their boss knew what task level duties they were capable of and what a competent professional they were. It's likely they built trust with their clients and with others outside the organization so that their reputation could transcend corporate boundaries. So the third leadership lesson that business school fails to teach you is to build strong connections with people around you. Think of it like a web of connections or a network of relationships that you need to build, manage and grow. And when you do this, you'll quickly realize that your reputation gets stronger. People come to you for advice more often and promotions get easier too. When you come out of business school or university, your mind is full of theoretical concepts and textbook smarts. And for a while, you might think that you are the smartest person in the room. Then you actually enter the room and you realize that other people know things that you don't. That what you learn in business school or university doesn't exactly apply the way the textbook or the way your professor said it should. And you might also be surprised to find that people with much less education than you know way more than you do and they're way better at their job too. This is when your ego starts to take a hit and in many cases you start to realize that practical experience is a lot more valuable than the theoretical concepts you were taught in business school. This was true for me. Most of of what I learned in my Master of Accounting degree wasn't used at all in my job. Taxation was a very small part of what I studied during my master degree and international tax was not covered at all. So in order to do my job well, I needed to really learn. I needed to learn from my peers, from my boss. I needed to listen during internal meetings. I needed to look at past client reports. Any method, any way that I could learn what I needed to to learn so I could do my job well. Then I needed to actually apply what I learned. I needed to do the work so I could solidify this knowledge. This leads us to the fourth leadership lesson that business school fails to teach you, and that is practical experience trumps theory. This means that you need to do the work. You need to get your hands dirty. You need to do instead of just think. And once you do, and you become really good at that task, you will reach a point where you need to pass the baton. And what I mean by this is you need to delegate that task to someone else. I know it's tempting to not do that. It's tempting to hold on to that task, the one that you're really good at and the one that you probably get all of the praise and glory for too. But 
while you are enjoying that praise, others who are less experienced or less educated than you have already moved on to learning a new task and they have delegated that first task on to someone else. It's this process of learning, perfecting and transferring that gets those less experienced people promoted ahead of you because it frees up their time to upskill themselves or to build connections or to do something else that's going to help them advance in their career. So the fifth leadership lesson that business school doesn't teach you is to pass the baton. Rather than being scared of relinquishing control of something that you have learned or something that you've built, shift your perspective and see delegating as the first step to becoming a true leader. Think of authors. If they were to hold on to all their knowledge and not share it with other people in the form of a book, would they be as recognized and respected as what they are? No, they wouldn't. And I think it's fair to say that they wouldn't stand out from their competition or be visible either if they kept all of their knowledge and their expertise to themselves. They'd just be another cog in the wheel, which is how many emerging leaders who work for larger companies feel. And I get it. It can be really hard to stand out and to separate yourself from others at work. It's not that you don't have unique or valuable ideas. I know that all of you watching do. It's just that getting the courage to voice those ideas to other people can be really challenging. In other words, to make your ideas public and to position yourself as a thought leader rather than a thought follower. And this is probably one of the biggest transitions that you need to make when you leave business school. As Dory Clark in her book, Stand Out writes, there is a lingering cultural belief that if you just work hard enough, you'll be lauded as an authority if your work merits it. Unfortunately, that's a recipe for professional disaster. I've put a link for this book in the description below if you want to check it out. So the sixth lesson that you do not learn in business school is to not be another cog in the wheel. Sharing your ideas during meetings is a great way to stand out and to not be another cog in the wheel. Understanding the dynamics that are around you, the dynamics in your team, your company and the culture in which you operate is another way to stand out. Out. And now I want to turn the discussion over to you. Let me know in the comments, what other ways can you think of to not be another cog in the wheel? What other ways can you think of to stand out and to be more visible at work? If you are a regular viewer of my channel, you've probably watched some of my videos on how to be more visible. So you might already have some ideas in your mind. Write them in the comments and let's share them and let's start a discussion. Check out my playlist on the screen up here for other videos that will definitely help you in your leadership journey. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got a lot of valuable insights from watching it. If you did like it, please hit the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you know every time when I release a new video. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next week in another video.